Awesome. Well, welcome everyone to Cisco Canada's Virtual Kitchen podcast show, network, whatever you want to call it. Uh, we got a great show lined up today talking about restaurant social media. We got the social media guru on. Nate, welcome back to the show, dude. Thank you, Jay. Very happy to be here. Um, so uh, I think we're going to pick up uh, sort of where we left off. I got the list you sent me of all the things you want to talk about. And I like the first part is that you want to recap what we talked about last time, which I think is really good for our viewers. Uh, they're going to be watching the show um, is to remember what we talked about last time. What did we so talk about I, last time? Right? <laughs> what did we talk about last time? It was a bit of a whirlwind, Jay. But, um, you know, in the last episode, we talked about the growth um, in social media usage, how prevalent um, it's become in Canada. Uh, we discussed, you know, a lot of numbers and statistics that illustrate, you know, just how important it is to uh, potential customers and existing customers when it comes to making decisions about going to a restaurant. Yeah. Um, and today we're going to be discussing, you know, we're going to be furthering that discussion. We're going to talk about the importance of social media for restaurant marketing. And we're going to get into some of the specific platforms um, that I mentioned last time uh, where you kind of have to be. Um, and we're going to, I'm going to show you guys some really good um, examples of restaurants who are using social media very effectively um, to accomplish their goals. Do, Nate, do you find a lot of restaurants, um, like I, I, I see more and more better posts and better social media coming from restaurants than I ever right. had? Yeah, I mean, that's a great observation, Jay. And, and and that's what, you know, I think we're seeing across the board, just, you know, as more and more um, people get into social media um, and as, as there's just, you know, um, there's more there's more users, there's more people uh, doing it and starting to take an analytical approach uh, to it. And I think that what we're seeing is, you know, people essentially, for the most part, reacting to what works and what doesn't work, which is, you know, a big part of it. Um, and so, you know, we, we, we're in the age of, you know, content is king. Um, and it, it really comes down to uh, some of the ways that, you know, you can, you can leverage that uh, for your restaurant. Do you, is that, is that based on people just starting to understand it more or is it people hiring companies? I think it's pro a great question. I think it's probably a combination of both. Um, you know, part of it is that people are, you know, ha have more practice with it now and, and also are, you know, looking to others in terms of seeing what they're doing and what's successful. Um, but I also think, you know, because there is such an increased um, importance and role that it plays, you know, I, I, you know, I'm a statistics guy, Jay, and I love numbers. Um, you know, I was reading about how um, I think it's something like 75% of uh, posts that are short video posts versus their static counterparts um, uh, perform better. Uh, and, you know, when it comes to engagement and reach. And I think a big part of it is people, businesses recognizing that there is a lot more importance to it um, and that they should um, invest in it. And whether that means, you know, um, having someone on your staff who's uh, either dedicated to it or it's, you know, a formal component of what they do every day, um, or if it's, you know, hiring outside help and or, uh, you know, you can go all up to the agency level, but I think, you know, there, there's a lot of um, social consultants and just, you know, more and more what it, what it is essentially is the reaction to social media being a stronger place to play. You know, it, it used to be all about TV commercials is the best way to get your um, brand and story to come to life. And, you know, wh when you're looking at things like cost, reach, and uh, engagement, social media has really sort of taken that to the next level. Do you think, Nate, there's a lot of the questions that I, I don't want to hit you with a whole bunch right now, but do you ever see us going back to long, long form video when you talk about social, like everything's short, short right now? Do you think we'll ever swing back or find a medium? It, it could, uh, it could swing back, um, but 
you know, my, frankly, my prediction is that it will continue to get shorter and shorter uh, to oh, a wow. point. And I, I think that that happens, you know, for a few reasons, but a big part is the, uh, I mean, the reason that short form video tends to do better in social mm -hmm. is just because of that um, limited attention span uh, that we all um, you know, have and the effect that we all have, yeah. Scrolling through social, it, it sort of just furthers that, you know, you really, really limits our attention span. And so, you know, the, the quicker that, that things can move and come across, um, the better, you know, if you think about the evolution sort of, of the way, you know, social platforms have evolved, you know, it started with text. Um, and, and a lot of it was like, load as much text as you can. And then, you know, when Instagram did so well and eventually Facebook bought Instagram, you know, there there was the movement to images and images, yeah. you know, performing that much better. And when you think about, you know, that, that expression, you know, an image is worth a thousand words, it, it sort of makes sense in the sense that you're able to just convey that much more, um, that much quicker and with that much less. Um, and so I think what's happening with video is kind of the same thing where you know you have these long form videos that are great um and there's a lot of content in there and i think don't get me wrong i don't think that those videos are are going to um decrease or people are going to be watching less of them i think it's more about you know in social them getting shorter and shorter trying to get them to watch yeah. the video well there's so much content out right now that it's There's hard so to, it's almost hard to consume so much too, right? Like, you, like, how do you take all that in without, you know, scrolling or, or, you know, jumping on different things? And I think it's the same thing with restaurants is that there's so much out there for restaurants nowadays is, does it become white noise to a point? Like, is there too much? Here's a question for you, Nate. Sure. Can you post too much for restaurants? If I'm a restaurant right now, can you post, I don't know if this ever happens. Can you post too much? Yes, the answer is you you can post too much. I think it's hard to get there, um, but I think you know. And again, it, it comes down to the restaurant. It comes down to the type of restaurant you are, what you're offering, you know, what customers expect from you. Um, I would say for restaurants, that threshold of too much is pretty high. As in, you know, the more content you can put out, the better. Um, you know, the, the caveat and why I say there is a point of, you know, diminishing return and a point where it starts to hurt you is if, you know, you're posting too much uh, and your customers and or potential customers who are um, uh, seeing, you, you know, your, your content, if they feel like, A, it's not valuable or relevant to them, yeah. and if they view it as a distraction, um, that is happening way too frequently. And I think that's based on you have to have a good strategy plan for your for your social. Absolutely, but I will say, I, you know, I think that 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 threshold of too much is pretty hard to reach. Like, as in, it, if your content's good, and yeah. you know, it, it it hits the three things that that people want from a social media post um, and social media content. And by the way, those three things are. Um, entertaining um uh, sharing information yeah. uh, uh or starting a conversation uh and engaging those so, are so, those. yeah so nate i got another question here for you before we get into the, the, this other stuff is when restaurants post stuff on there is there a point where not that it's you you post too much mm -hmm. But is there a point, I might have lost my train of thought on this. You got me thinking so much on all the different things here to ask you, because it's such a huge thing here, is I think restaurants, um, what's it do to their business? That's the question I was looking for. So, because we hear this all the time. All right, it's, they think it's it's just something you got to do. It's fun. It's not this. But have you heard what it actually does to restaurants when they do get a good following? Because I've heard some crazy stories lately. You know, I, I've I've heard of you know a lot of times anecdotally of restaurants blowing up in a good way yeah. um, from you know great social content that they're producing. Um, 
you know, and that's something that we can talk about to, you know, and maybe I can, you know, in a future episode, um, highlight some good cases of that happening. Mm -hmm. um, but to, to answer your question, I mean, we definitely see it uh, in the statistics. I, th I think I mentioned it last time that, you know, for, it's a U.S. stat, but 45% uh, of diners who went to a restaurant in the last year uh, did so because um, they were exposed or saw a um, piece of social content from that restaurant. And of those 45%, 25% went back to the restaurant uh, because of either further follow-ups on social um, or content that, you know, got them interested. Um, so, wow. you know, that's a pretty strong number. And so uh, I was going to touch on it in a minute for Instagram, but, you know, 30%, according to social media today, 30 uh, percent of millennial diners actively avoid restaurants uh, with a weak Instagram presence. Um, so, so wait, wait a second, you said 30 percent avoid? 30 percent of millennial diners will actively avoid uh, restaurants with weak and what and weak is weak, weak Instagram presence. I mean, it's a subjective oh, I've seen uh, some. term, but yeah, exactly. You can you can picture yeah. what that is. Um, yeah. And I mean, to me, that's pretty telling and compelling uh, in itself. Well, that's, I just want to know, because I've heard some crazy stories just on the impact that social does. And I'm going to say most, I think, restaurateurs understand it. But I think why I say that is I think the importance of having a strategy on your social, and a lot of people get scared. And we always say strategy in our industry. You got to have a strategy. Well, I, I think it's important because I'm – quite active on social as well and i find myself forgetting to either post on one side when what's the best time you know yeah. right now i'm doing a test this week on my social platforms with an increased social presence that i've got been told to do to see how it works it's like a test week for me and i'm hammering stuff out there it's crazy um so i'm kind of seeing what that is and look at the results later but from a restaurant i think a lot of them um, may not see that yet or may not be doing it in the sense of a plan to put out the content that makes sense or when or what to do it. And and I think that's important because I just personally think you, you get so busy, you forget, oh, man, I forgot to post on IG or I, I post on the LinkedIn or I didn't put a rest. Like there's so much to think in that space. I think it's important people know what they're doing. Totally. Have a plan. Yeah. Have a plan. Yeah, I mean, I'm a big fan of the uh, uh, fail to plan, plan to fail, you know? It, uh, exactly. Right, but I think it's important that people have a plan in that area. It doesn't have to be sophisticated by no means. Exactly. Can, I think and, and you you can the, the nail on the head, right? it, it yeah. doesn't have to be sophisticated. It uh, th There's a lot of things you can just start doing today that go a long way. Exactly. Exactly. All right. So we're going to dive into this stuff now, Nate. You ready for this? We're going to dive in. Yep. I'm going to share some slides that I've no, just got. Wait, Cause I have people following me right now on IG watching this live on IG, IG live or IG, I don't know what they call it, IG TV. So I, anyways, uh, we're over there. So if you want to watch us, watch this stuff, cause Nate's got some good stuff here, go over to Cisco Canada's YouTube page or Cisco Canada's Facebook page, my LinkedIn page. And Nate's going to show you stuff that will blow your mind. Did well, I talk that up enough, Nate? I hope so. Yeah, I, th I think uh, you just about covered it. But yeah, make sure you um, like and subscribe uh, to our channel. Oh, yeah. that, uh, that, way too. Get... <laughs> that too, Nate. Thanks, Nate. Did you know, Nate, that I was told that you have to say that when you do these shows? Because it does increase when it, you say It does that. increase. I mean, basically, you know, it, it's it's cutting to the chase in a lot of ways of, you know, what... what um, but of what you know helps helps shows on youtube um but also you know like it really is a um sometimes you, you you've got to ask people you know and um but the, but the benefit to following really is that you get notified uh when we have new shows and new content um and you know any sometimes there'll be special engagements with followers um so make sure you like that Hit that like button and subscribe. Yeah, yeah, Nate, uh, you can do that if you want. You can do the pointing if you like. 
Love it. <laughs> we'll make you a awesome. YouTuber today, buddy. Don't worry. Yeah. So, All right. um, do we good? We good to dive in? Yeah, go. Wonderful. The wheel is yours. Okay. So, you know, last time we talked a little bit about, you know, what are the social media platforms that, you know, you should be on, um, you know, and, and the four that I talked about sort of as the main core, you know, are Facebook, uh, Instagram, and then Twitter and TikTok. And we talked about TikTok, you know, being there uh, primarily because of the, you know, growth uh, that's been happening in that space um, mm -hmm. and that it, you know, that that it was skewing to such a younger generation and now isn't isn't uh doing that as much um but you know i'll quickly touch on these four platforms and then we'll dive a little bit deeper into facebook and instagram um but we won't spend much time on twitter and TikTok today uh just to make sure that we you know get through all the great content and can talk through um you know some some uh great use cases and examples um but you know essentially facebook it's the most popular social media site of all time um and can be a great way to interact with guests and share day-to-day -day information and updates uh instagram great for visual storytelling through photos and videos you know sharing and connecting with guests and you know behind the scenes look uh sharing a behind the scenes look at your restaurant um also seems to work very well in instagram um Nate, yeah Nate, i'm sorry to interrupt no um, so it is, is, so we heard this big thing of people, I don't want to be on Facebook and all this, or I'm leaving it or is yep. that really, cause I know a lot of people talked it. I, I don't know if it's really the case. Is it, you know, a lot of people have said uh, that they're leaving Facebook or fed up with Facebook. I've heard that too. Yep. I actually haven't seen a lot of instances where brands or companies have actually left the platform. Uh, in a wow. real way um but that said you know like meta does have a lot going on um it's worth paying close attention to um but to me what it what it comes down to here is your customers and prospects are on facebook and if you're not there they're still having that conversation um about your brand and about yeah. your restaurant and whether you're a part of it or not um it's sort of up to you yeah, it's still huge. It's still the number one platform, right? Oh, it's absolutely huge. Yeah, it is still by far the number one platform uh, in terms of users and um, uh, and reach. So when did Facebook acquire Instagram? Like, was it a long time ago? I think um, it was probably in, I want to say 2013. Uh, oh, so I, it wasn't that long ago, really. Don't quote me on that. Exactly. Yeah, I think... Instagram rose to prominence around uh, 2010, I feel like, is when it started building up. And I think the acquisition happened uh, in 2013. Uh, you know, I, I can uh, I can check that uh, and get back to you. Um, hmm. And yeah, we'll, we'll get into both of those platforms in a second. Um, just, you know, touching on Twitter. Twitter is really ideal for guests engagement and communication. When you think about you know what what twitter is really effective for you know it's really effective for news um and it can also be a great way to announce specials or share quick news so for example if your restaurant needs to close for some reason um or there's you know new new updates uh it's a great way to interact with new and existing customers um and as i mentioned with TikTok, TikTok has blown up recently um, taking it from an app largely aimed towards, you know, a significantly younger generation. Um, and it's it's becoming an established social media site. Um, and for restaurants, you know, TikTok is a very effective marketing tool and it's a great way to showcase your creativity. Nate. Yeah. Is there anything on the horizon of new social platforms that may be coming up or anything? There, there are, you know, there, there's, there's, there's really? a lot really? of entrance to the space. Um, not, not a lot of official ones, let's say, um, but a lot of, there's a lot of buzz, um, particularly when it comes to new and mixed media. So, I mean, we, we can chat about it in a later sure. show. Um, but when you think about things like, 
AR and VR, you know, as yeah. those truly take the next step, um, you know, think about what a social platform or social experience uh, could look like in some of those mediums. Oh, so hey, you shouldn't have said that, man. My head just went spinning uh, for a second. It's exciting. It's exciting times, and you know, there's not a lot of detail out there, but it it there's um, you know. Th- there's definitely the appetite those uh those mediums are going to become more and more mainstream and relevant and based on both the hiring patterns of the top players in terms of mm-hmm. you know who they're acquiring um we can absolutely expect oh, uh, entrance so Nate, to that yeah i'm gonna ask you another question about this because i think it's brilliant first of all, i didn't even think of it but what do you do you believe this is just speculation that AI then will get into social media soon? If it isn't like it is now, like it's. I was going to say, it's already, we're already there. We're um, already there. But do you think it's going to be a there. point where AI will, will then become like a social site in a way? It, it, it could happen. I mean, so I think there's always going to be um, creative people and marketers who are sort of directing or orchestrating that AI. Yeah. And s- similar with writers, I mean, it's a conversation that everyone's having right now in yeah. terms of, you know, how far AI's come and, you know, what's gonna happen to writers and writing. Um, and I, I think I think it's kind of a similar situation, um, but I will say it's already here. And, you know, Jay, I know you did a show on ChatGPT, which is um, one of the biggest and most prevalent examples of AI and um, is an AI, uh, sorry, an open AI tool um, that I'm sure a lot of people have um, exposure to or are aware, of, at least aware of at this point. Um, but one thing you might not know is there uh, a similar product in that line. Uh, I think it's GPT-3 um, yeah. is actually something you can incorporate today to help with your restaurant in terms of you know having a chat bot um that leverages a lot of the tools of ai and um you know you sort of teach it how you want it to interact with people and it can you know do handle a lot of the things that would normally be done um by an individual uh, or someone on your team so i mean we we can get further into that uh, (laughs) time because really we can spend the whole show talking about it i know Um, well that's a great subject because it's hot right now and it's an area that I think is going to develop over the next year to, to, we probably even, we'll talk about it now, Nate, a year from now, it'll be a whole different world. Absolutely. I mean, fast. my take with most of these things is it's exactly that you kind of, there's, there's kind of that period of where there is, you know, a first mover advantage with some risks by, you know, starting to use the platforms and jump in right away. Um, but at the same time, like I, I would bet that you know the conversation we'll be having a year from now is these are all mainstream and everyone's using them, and it's you know what's next. Well, there you go. <laughs> all right, I will derail you again, Nate. Here we no, go. oh good, Facebook. You know, great discussion. Uh, my mind and, is just fried on how to talk through any of crazy it's going to get. It, it's going to get crazy, um, but it's also going to get. Great. And I'm hoping that, you know, as we sort of talked about at the top of the show, you know, that the content will just keep getting better and better versus the volume um, getting more and more. So, Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, and so with that, it's a it's a good opportunity for us to sort of jump into uh, Facebook, Instagram, you know, what the goal is, who you'll need, like, why be there? Um, And, uh, you know, if you, you were talking about ideal times to post and how much to post. Um, Again, all that comes down to the specifics of who you are and is contextual. Uh, But at the same time, you know, there are some best practices that, um, you know, people find generally work uh, almost universally. So, you know, Facebook, uh, really simple. We all know what Facebook is, so I'm not going to spend too much time there. Um, but really the, you know, the goal is to build a community for your customers. Um, yeah. and it's, you know, about encouraging page visits and comments. Um, you know, what, what I'll say there is Facebook is the most popular social media site of all time. 
Um, it can be a very impactful tool to drive traffic to your restaurant. Uh, your guests are active in the platform. Um, not only are your guests using Facebook, but Facebook is also collecting a lot of useful data uh, about them based on their activity. And, um, you know, again, for, for better, for worse, we're not, we're not here to uh, debate the ethics or moral um, component of, of these social platforms. Um, but, you know, when it comes to businesses um, and marketing, uh, that information that Facebook is constantly collecting um, can be very, very helpful. Um, so, yeah, in terms of who you'll reach, like uh, Facebook has up to depending on depending on whether you know you're national, international, local. Um, but there's you know 2.89 billion monthly active users, um, which is also typically the way that that people look at and assess. Um, you know, the growth and also sustainability of these sites. Are, you know, are our monthly active users growing, staying the same or shrinking? Um, and when it comes to ideal posting frequency for Facebook, you know, it's around one to three times a day. Again, that is, um, you know, a, again, whether you're consumer facing or B2B, I mean, I know for our purposes, we're talking about consumer facing, which is why it's one to three times a day. Um, but, you know, that's, and, and that's a ideal. Um, if, if, if starting, you know, and you're able to do um, three pieces of content a week in Facebook, that that's a really good starting point as well. Um, jumping into Instagram, um, you know, and in Instagram is, uh, it's first of all, it's officially the second most popular social media site behind Facebook. Um, and it's also for anyone who doesn't know owned by Facebook, um, Instagram's likely where most of your target audience spends a lot of their time when they're on their phones, uh, because it's inherently scrollable. Um, you know, and it was developed for mobile, uh, versus Facebook, which was developed for desktop and then um, made mobile optimized. So, you know, that that's sort of a, a key distinction between the two platforms. Um, if, if your restaurant isn't already active on Instagram or isn't very active there, you're missing out on huge branding, huge customer acquisition and huge engagement opportunities. Um, it's, it's a, as I said, it's a great place to showcase your restaurant's brand. Um, and what works really well in Instagram is visual storytelling. Um, Instagram has approximately now 1 billion monthly active users. So if you think about that relative to Facebook's 2.68, I think it was, um, you know, you, you can sort of get a sense of the, the size. Um, describing screen. And in Instagram, uh, and Instagram is one where you, you know, you can post too much if you're posting feed posts. Um, mm -hmm. and that's where, you know, ideally you want to aim for three to five times per week. Um, but you, that said, you know, you can um, really leverage um, stories, right? You can post stories, Instagram stories, as often as you'd like, um, you know, and they're easy, they're quick. Uh, you can post even multiple times per day. Um, it, it's a really great way both to test uh, engagement um, on certain things and also, again, to to sort of um, pump out that content, uh, assuming it's good content, without risking, you know, annoying your audience. Mm. Um, you could. You could. You could annoy your audience pretty quick. Oh, okay. you, you could annoy your audience anywhere um, but but you know I, I'd say Instagram is more susceptible to it than Facebook in terms of the way that people use it and consume it again that's that's sort of scrolling through my feed Nate, um, have you ever heard of restaurants having like two or three Instagram channels I have um, I've heard of it and you know it depends on it all depends on what you're using those channels for and you know how different they are. I would, 
frankly, I would discourage it uh, just from the 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 principle of quality over quantity. Um, I think you want to make it really, really easy to make yourself found uh, and be discovered um, in these platforms. And I think sometimes having multiple handles gets a little confusing um, and can be tough for users. Again, it, wh where that sort of break would be is if there's completely different content among the different um, the different accounts or handles, then you know, and, and if there's a reason for that, for example, if you have, you know, one that's separate for recruiting and employment or one that's um, separate because it's, you know, very, very specific, um, like to recipes or something else, then then that's where, you know, there are, there are cases where it makes sense. But I would say um, better to have one account and handle that you market really, really well um, versus potentially spreading yourself too thin. So three to four times a week, that doesn't include stories, Nate, or is that with that the does stories? not include stories. So three to five times per week should, you know, that's that's supposedly the sweet spot for okay. um, for uh, uh, what are called feed posts, which are, you know, uh, if you look at uh, here in a second, you know, we'll jump to some examples. Actually, we can jump to them yeah. now and start getting right in there. Um, this is good stuff. Just managing the clock, but there, you know, you'll see that. Um, so feed posts uh, in the in the screen that you're looking at right now, um, those posts appear in what's called your grid, and that's you know when people go and click your profile or engage with you, um, the first the first thing they'll see is is you know the, the your your profile, but also your grid. They'll see like what what posts are here. It, you know, it's a great kind of way to see oh, not just what people have posted, the but what they. Okay. Nate, the yep. Nate, the grid is this part down here at the bottom, or is it the all the circles? The grid is the um, are the posts and photos at the bottom, and okay. the circles are what are called highlights. And highlights are a collection of stories. And you know that that's basically Instagram stories are posts that are. Um, they don't go to your grid or your feed. Um, they show up in in um, stories, which you know is another way to interact. And stories, the the main characteristics of them are um, you aren't seeing sort of you know necessarily everyone's comments. They can also be directed um, you know in more targeted ways. There, there's in, engagement opportunities and tools, for example, like adding polls, um, you know, is a feature of stories and Instagram updates them all the time. Uh, but the main distinction is stories, unless unless you specify otherwise, expire after 24 hours. So they go away okay. and they're not um, part of your grid. They don't become part of your grid. So uh, if it's a great way like if you're at an event or you're at a trade show or you know um or you're having an event or even just throughout the day if you want to post a lot um it's a it's just a really good way to do that and what you're yeah. what you asked about uh those circles on the top those are what are called highlights and that is the ability to collect stories and keep them um for a long period of time oh okay those yeah. are stories then? So those are not posts, those are stories. The 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 row of circles are yeah. all story. They're they're collections of stories. So okay. um, you know, and that's something I can I can uh, share some visuals of next time. Sure. Um but here, I mean let's get into, you know, here's a great example of Pizza Pizza Libretto uh, is a Toronto-based pizzeria that effectively uses Instagram to showcase their menu and daily specials. Um the, you know, what are they doing well? They have a lot of great eye-popping visuals. They do a lot of shorts and reels, um, which is why you might see um, those highlights. And How many reels, uh, Nate? Is reels different than posting or is reels post? Reels, uh, reels are posts, but they, they, all, they fall into a different category. You can think of reels as video. Essentially, that's, okay. that's what um, reels are. Reels are posts that are, are classified as video. Um, and again, that 
that comes with some extra features and functionalities that aren't part of feed posts, um, similar to stories, you know. Um, so, uh, yeah, and, and you know, Pete's Libretto does a great job of doing those things um, and engaging with their community very well. Um, you know, in the example on the right, they're, they're, they get into, you know, the ingredients and it starts with the dough um, and, and, you know, they describe their process. They really want you to feel like, you know, you get it, you get what they're doing, you get what they're all about. Um, you know, here's, here's an example of um, Pete's libretto. He's talking about, you know, a menu feature for the week. Oh. Um, but again, those great visuals explaining what's on the pizza, how they make it, the ingredients. And you can see, you know, people are, are responding and engaged. Um, yeah. And then, so then the next example, um, Nate, Nate, Nate yeah. question. Sorry. Sorry. Sure. Can you go back to that? Sure. Is this, this desktop view? Cause why is this look different than my phone? Uh, this is desktop view. Yeah. This is okay, a mock-up. Okay. I was like, uh, that looks yeah. really good. I love that video, by the way. Love the video. Yeah. It's. It, you know, you can check out their profile, but they, they do a really good job of... Well, I love the um, fact that they're putting their chef and their owner, whoever that is, is you're you're personalizing the brand with people. I love it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, the next uh, example I'm going to show um, does that very, very well as well. And that's Vigil. Hey, Nate, I got, a, I got a question here on my Instagram account. Sure. Melissa, thank you, Melissa. Can stories be rewatched or do they disappear? Um, by by viewers, stories can be rewatched as many times as you want um, within 24 hours. Like so, um, basically, you put up the story and it's in your stories section mm -hmm. uh, and it stays there for 24 hours. And any time that someone clicks your profile, um, your stories section, they'll uh, be taken through your collection of stories. And stories are typically shown for 15 seconds tops, each one. How long? 15 seconds, one five. 15 seconds, okay. Yeah. There you go. Um, but so, well, yeah, after 24 hours, they go away unless you save them and or collect them in a highlight. Um, as, as Is there is, a reason behind that, Nate? Is there a reason um, engagement? So the, the reason is engagement. Um, th there's there's a lot of reasons, um, but one of the uh, primary ones is the um, essentially it's it probably started and this is you know not a controversial opinion, but it's my opinion. Uh, it's okay. stories got started and furthered as as a competitive response to Snapchat, um, you know, oh. and. The, the same way that YouTube Shorts, um, I'd say the primary driver was a competitive response to TikTok. Mm. Yeah. I'm sold um, on that, Nate. <laughs> so this example is Vidges, and it's a premium Indian restaurant in Vancouver. Um, they use Facebook and Instagram to share their menu, events, daily specials. You know, one thing that they don't do, and you can notice um, in their Instagram here, is uh, you'll see posts and tag, but you don't see reels. Um, and they don't do a lot of reels or video, um, which is interesting. Um, that could be because of a, you know, capacity issue or um, or could be their style and choice. Um, but, mm -hmm. you know, is, is something notable. Um, that said, they do have a great following and they do social media very, very well. Um, and what does that, what does that mean? It's be, you know, they use a lot of eye popping visuals. The food looks great. Um, they do a great job of showcasing their atmosphere and ambiance. You can see, yeah. um, the, the example on the right is a, um, one of their posts about, you know, being part of, you know, dine around, uh, Vancouver, a festival. Um, but you know, they don't just, they, they, they do post the dine around, um, or, or dine out, uh, uh, graphics, but they, they make sure, you know, it, it shows their atmosphere. Um, and I think, you know, uh, building, you know, that idea, painting that picture of what it's like to be there uh, and come there. So, 
yeah, sorry, it's Dine Out Vancouver, not Dine Around. Um, and uh, yeah, the, the other thing, another thing that they do really, really well is showcase and highlight their people and also, you know, behind the scenes content that, you know, you'll see things like this, um, posts like this, which, you know, really show sort of that, that process, who, who's there, who's making it. And it's, you know, really builds that community and connection feeling. Um, here are some other great examples Beautiful of photos. them Beautiful highlighting photos. their people. Yeah. Celebrating awards, um, you know, uh, being, being added to the Michelin uh, guide stop, but just making sure that, you know, their people come through and, you know, mm. um, I think as the second post says, you know, where the magic happens. Um, and yeah, I, I think they're, they're a great example of, you know, doing social very well. Um, you know, I, I know by the way, that food, the food that they cook there is to die for, by the way. Yeah, is it? Okay. Yeah, it's up there on my, one of my favorite. You bet. I'll have to check it out next time I'm in uh, Vancouver. Um, here's another one. This is um, Tres Carnales, uh, which is a Mexican restaurant in Edmonton. Um, you know, they, they effectively use Instagram to promote their menu, specials, and uh, daily deals. Oh, wow, so that they, they highlight um you know and here are some some good examples again oh, oh. you might you might be noticing a trend wow. of eye popping delicious looking um images image you know high quality images um and, and I, I personally don't believe that these are you know necessarily taken by professional photographers oh. I, I can bet you they're not um that, but, that's a good that's that's a good thing Nate not to diss professional photographers, I think there's a place yeah. for them, but I think a lot of people think you need to go that way, and I don't think you need to. I think you use the phones today. These cameras on these phones are crazy good. Absolutely, and, I mean, uh, it's worth yeah. uh, it's worth you know knowing how to optimize the camera you have on your phone. Yeah. You know, whether it's an iPhone, whether it's an Android, whether it's a Pixel. Um, there's certain things that you can do, different settings, uh, different filters that are really helpful. Um, but as you said, Jay, you know, phone cameras have gotten to the point where they're, they're, they're really, really great. And for the, um, typical person, even business, you know, they, mm. they more than do the job. Um, oh, incredible. and I will also say a lot of the content that's shot, you know, and, and Instagram sort of pilot, like made this more and more popular, especially when it comes to video, you know, shooting yeah. video. Uh, in portrait mode or, you know, that the versus landscape um, typically, you know, has, has always sort of been a frowned upon uh, practice that Instagram really made more and more mainstream because of the format and because, you know, that's, that's how people scroll um, their feeds. So it, it, it's interesting, um, very interesting to me um, when when a tool or a product, you know, is able to, to sh make a pretty big shift in behavior for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, just still going, you know, and another great example is Joe Beef. Um, Joe Beef's a popular Montreal based steakhouse and they use Instagram um, quite well. Um, you know, so what are some of the things that they do really well? They showcase their menu, uh, unique dishes, um they they highlight their overall dining experience um one one other thing that they do that's pretty cool is they've really um because you know they they're quite popular and uh you know the experience like they they have developed quite a good um uh brand and um you know that that's taken them to offering a lot of merch and products that they sell um, directly from Instagram through uh, Instagram shop features. And, you know, th that's just a good example of, you know, they've, they've, they've built, um, I think they have, yeah, 20.8 20, 20. thousand followers. Um, and uh, they are very community driven and all those things lead to, um, you know, people want buying into that brand and, you know, um, uh they're they're definitely leveraging that even further on social um 
here's some examples of some of their posts. Um, some of their posts, you can see again, you know, what works really, really well in Instagram is visual storytelling, um, high quality, high res uh, images yeah. of food. Um, and uh, yeah, and an example on the right of them um, showcasing their people, right? And, um, and, and bringing them sort of front and center and what they're all about. So um, yeah, there's, there's Joe Beef. Um, the next example we can look at is the Chuck Wagon Cafe. They're a family owned diner and kitchen and sorry, in Kitchener, Ontario. Um, yeah. And they leverage Facebook and Instagram really well uh, with, with their customers. And um, so it seems like they're, you know, they have, they have a strong focus on building their community base. Um, and mm -hmm. I would say their content seems to both cater to their regulars, but also geared towards attracting new customers. There seem to be, you know, some nods um, uh, to their regulars, which I think is kind of cool. Um, and I think, you know, really adds to that um, community building focus. Um, you can see, you know, their Instagram, they don't have any highlights. Um, so they haven't been, they don't have any story collections. They, but they make sure their info's there, um, you know, and it's connected to their ordering. And then they, again, for them, it's oh, wow. sort of all food and the experience, but, um, and you can see some of the captions are, are cheeky and, and are engaging, you know, they ask questions. Um, and so, yeah, there's a few examples. And then- How much is the text important, Nate, on posts? When you write the captions in the bottom? The captions are something? less important in Instagram than I would say the visual. Um, but they, okay. they, it's all important. Um, you know, yeah. and here's an example of them um, creating TikTok content that's, you know, I'd say primarily for entertainment uh, purposes that they're, that they're also leveraging on Instagram uh, as reels. Um, you know, this one's for, I think, a, kit, a tip uh, calculator, you know, friendly, it says friendly reminder, the most, if not all phones ha have a calculator on them. Um, but just, yeah, that, that idea of, you know, um, making posts that are fun and entertaining, which is a great thing to aspire to. I mean, that said, I, I don't think you need to be fun and entertaining all the time. Um, uh, in terms of, it's, it really comes down to knowing your audience and knowing your brand. Yeah. And um, in your brand, in your brand, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the next example is uh, Chiang Mai, which is a popular Toronto Thai restaurant. They have, um, I think, three locations, um, and. You know, I wanted to highlight a few things that they're doing really, really well as examples. Um, you know, they <clears throat> are similar and like they're focused on the information, um, you know, in terms of like uh, the about them. Um, they have like clearly uh, curated some stories into highlights. You can see those circles, you know, bar guests awards and parking and if you were to click on those you know you'd see some of their saved stories um that uh correspond with those collections um they have a they have great consistent branding and imagery um they lean into their roots and community um but one area that we'll step into and i'll i'll, sh I'll show um they do a really great job of of user generated content and we'll talk about what that means in a minute um, so this is, yeah, Chiang Mai, uh, here's a good example of, um, you know, again, great, great food visuals. Um, that's almost a, a must in terms of, um, what works in Instagram for restaurants. Um, it's, a, it's that visual storytelling, get people in, um, make them want to, want to be there, want to eat the food, want to experience, want them to get the experience. Um, and then the post in the middle is a good example of, you know, the way that they also produce um, content designed to engage people. So, you know, the question is here is what do you use to eat pad thai? Is it chopsticks or a, a fork and a spoon? Um, 
and it's, it's you know one of those fun facts um ties are more likely to eat pad thai with a spoon and a fork why read below so they you know they're they're asking a question they want you to engage with the post and they're also giving you either some you know fun information or just some information that's relatable uh, or and related to um them that again just just further that level of engagement right you you want to click to read more i i that that's an interesting fact to me i, I want to know why i'm not going to spoil it you guys can um find them and and read more um and then the post on the right is a great example of um what i i would deem as great user generated content um mm. and we'll talk about that in a second but um essentially user generated content is is what it sounds like is um having your users or customers or guests um generate some of the content for you and it's about um you know i i've broken it down into five key elements which you know we'll talk about in a second but actually we can jump to right now um so you know here's here's and i've taken a screenshot of included a screen grab of you know their website where they have a a big call out for let's get social you know, use the hashtag um, Chiang Mai Etobicoke uh, or mention Chiang Mai TO to be featured. But essentially, they're they're telling you, you know, we want to feature your content on social. Here's how here's how to do it. So, um, and then yeah, so I, I I've sort of broken it down, trying to make it simple. There, there's really five key elements to or for generating um, uh, effective user generated content. And, you know, those are encouragement, right? Like inviting customers to share their experiences and photos um, at your restaurant. And that's by using hashtags. You can run contests or offering incentives like discounts or promotions. Um, and again, it's, it's really about you know what will work to build that content and you know if you feel yeah. like you don't have the expertise or the tools sometimes it's great to just incentivize some of these people who do it so well um to to essentially be ambassadors for you uh the second component is collection right and that's keeping track of all the user generated content that's being um I'm gonna, i gotta stop using the word generated uh in connecting this but um it's essentially you know, tracking and compiling all the um, UGC that's being assembled about your restaurant on social media platforms. So, you, you know, you can use tools like social media listening or monitoring tools to stay up to date with what people are saying. Um, there's there's lots of different ways to do that. Um, and then it's about leveraging it, right? It's about sharing user generated content on your own social media channels by reposting it. Uh, or by showcasing it on your website, or even in restaurant displays. You know, it's a, if if people are are generating awesome, beautiful content for you, you know, it, it's really just comes down to how do you use that. Um, and there's a lot of great ways to do it. And then, and then there's uh, you know the engagement piece, which is essentially responding to and engaging with customers who have shared user generated content about your restaurant. It, this shows that you're paying attention and that you value their contribution. I love it. And uh, lastly is measurement. And that's about tracking the impact of your user generated content efforts. Um, and that comes down to metrics like engagement rates, reach and conversions. Um, impressions? It, uh, you can look at it as impressions as well. It, again, it depends what, um, what the aim and what your goals are. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, impressions is, is a contributor to reach, right? That's like, um, you can think of reach, uh, impressions is the mass number uh, of times that that piece of content has been put in front of somebody's eyeballs um, and reach as the uh, individual, like the number of individuals that that's been put in front of. For, so for example, Jay, if you see in your feed, you know, if you look at the same, if it gets shown to you five times, um, that's going to count for five impressions, but only one reach. Yeah. yeah um, that makes and, sense. 
it is what it is. It's, it's an impression. It's, it's, it's a the key piece of measurement. It's a day. is hey, get it. You know, essentially, it's just helping you understand what's working and what's not, and helping you make informed decisions on how to optimize or adjust your user generated content strategy in the future. Right? You might be getting tons of content, but maybe it's not. It's not what you want like you'll see that with measurement um and then it's it's a great opportunity to adjust um cool. lastly here's an example of Chiang Mai celebrating you know their fourth anniversary with um a real um you know highlighting some of their um roots and community and giving back um, oh, cool. and again it's it's just that sort of great way to build community um you know, and, and you can see there, there's a lot of men's likes and a lot of engagement around, um, you know, initiatives like this. And, um, Love yeah, it. uh, just, um, yeah, I mean, uh, so, you know, essentially, um, as we've seen, um, from these examples, Social media can play a significant role in boosting your restaurant's visibility and attracting new customers. Um, you know, by considering some of the tactics that we've discussed, you can effectively leverage the power of social media uh, to engage with your audience and achieve desired results. Again, it depends. It's it's knowing your audience, knowing yourself, um, and what you're trying to accomplish. Um, you know, I, I would say next steps really are, you know, take some time to assess your current situation and think about your goals um, for your restaurant's presence on social media. You know, is it community building? Is it, um, uh, you know, loyalty and um, uh, which, I mean, you know, can be a, an important component of community building, but just, you know, think about who your audience yeah. is and what your goals are um, and, and go from there. Um, and you know, with with careful planning and implementation, you can absolutely chart a course for success and reach new heights for your business through social media. That's it. There you go, Nate. <laughs> that was a lot. So first of all, thank you. I know that's, that's a lot. That's I a think lot. social media. I think the best thing that I always say to people is just get into it. You'll learn your yeah. way through it, and 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 you know, don't get too critical if you make mistakes. Because I sure made a few. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I think just consistency, like you said, plan, strategy, all those components, measure, all those things to do and navigate this thing because it is incredible on the impact it can have on your business. It really, and I can. mean, I believe. One thing we talked about at the start of the show, you know, which is is just so true, and I almost can't emphasize enough is. You know, it's always changing. There's always new developments. Yeah. Um, you know, even within the existing platforms, there's changes that happen, you know, weekly, monthly that add new features um, and, you know, new ways to interact or connect and do things. Um, and so, you know, that can be overwhelming for some people, um, but it's also kind of a leveler in the sense that it's always a good time to pick it up and you know try something new and uh as you said jay sort of get your hands in there and start doing it mm, i agree well thanks again nate and uh for everyone else thanks for joining today and uh i'm blown away nate i got so, i wrote down so many notes and stuff it's crazy so uh thanks again and to everyone else we're back again tomorrow with chef peter on this or that and uh nate Thanks again for all the crazy valuable information on social media. Thanks for having me on the show, Jay. Lots of fun and uh, look forward to the next episode. Awesome. Anyways, thanks so much, Nate, to everyone else. Have a great rest of your day and uh, we'll chat soon. Cheers. Oh, wrong button. Wrong button, Nate. There you go.